For a good chunk of this trip, Thor's hammer was 80% wet with a few dry sections. So I had to train my body to like climb 9A plus when it was damp and that's, that was a hard thing to do. Hello. My name is Daniel Woods. We are in Flatanger. I've always wanted to come to Flatanger ever since I saw videos of Adamantra climbing here. Flatanger is an incredible place. I started out sport climbing back in the day and got introduced to bouldering. I've now been bouldering for at least the last 10 years, pretty much every day. So this is the first time that I've had the motivation to switch back into sport climbing and try out something different. Flat Tanger seemed like the perfect place just because a lot of the harder routes here are essentially a bunch of boulder problems stacked on top of each other, separated by rests. I guess my theory was to take what I've learned in bouldering and apply my strength and see what I could do on a rope with it. My name's Dave. I grew up in Maine. I live in Colorado now. And I'm here in Norway climbing at this big flat tanger, Hans Hellerin cave. I love Norway. It reminds me of home, but also it's home with way better rock climbing and way better fishing. It's really nice here. Thor's hammer was definitely the prize. I saw it and I was like, wow, oh, that line climbs the whole steepest part of the cave. It's one of the biggest lines in the cave. I looked at Thor's hammer and was really shocked at how long it was and felt fear in my heart. Thought that maybe this route would be a good intro into sport climbing. The V11 at the top is really powerful on in-cut crimps. No! That's the beauty about this is the line's worth it, even if it's wet, so I'm gonna try everything to just get it done. Daniel came real close to doing um, Thor's hammer, which is real cool, but he, he had kind of the wrong beta, it seemed like, and he figured that out the hard way. I think I'm in deep now with this sport climbing game, pretty addicted to it. Definitely have a lot to learn. The one downside maybe climbing with Daniel is that you can't use a lot of his beta because it's just so darn powerful. Yeah, I go Gaston and then left foot on the smiley face. And then I bring my right toe up and go here, here, and then just go right foot, left foot out. The weather was really shitty actually. And we're talking like 100 kilometer an hour winds blowing like rain all over the place and no problem, no pasanata. We just climbed. I mean, there, the big pasanata was you'd get really wet hiking up or down. We're accessing the inaccessible right now. Okay, check point, the bush. Yeah, Dave, come on. Come on, come on, dude. Yeah. You notice how I like got the undercling and I was like, uh, yeah. uh, and then I was like, take. <laughs> it's like soaked. It taught me how to maybe go back and refine certain beta in certain sections so that I could climb it and have reserves when I was pumped and be able to do it when it was wet. I was pretty intimidated by the long routes. That kind of was a good thing because it inspired me to try another route, which was a little bit more boulderer friendly, we'll say. The crux was right off the ground. You just kind of squeeze out this really strange feature doing some really improbable movements that you don't really expect to do. A couple years of bouldering don't give you much endurance. I always say it's all in the mind. I don't know if it's all in the mind. I think it might be a lot of the forearms. <laughs> I got this savage forearm pump I developed here. I don't really feel very tired anywhere other than my forearm. One day, I actually climbed through the whole bottom boulder problem and managed to punt off the ending, uh, the last hard move. No! 
which was a bit of a disappointment, but the kind of ass kicking I needed to step it up. Okay, harnessed up. Will today be the day to not fall? And clip an anchor. Yeah. Still got really pumped in the forearms. Is there a knee bar in here? Yes. Yeah. See that right there? Exactly. Oh, that's wow. Where, that's where you rest? That's a nice one. Dave is like knee bar master. I've been knee barring since 97, 96. Basically, when I started rock climbing, I just look at the wall and I'm like, oh, yeah, get me in those knee bars. This climbing area is so full of knee bars that it's what one would call a knee bar paradise. I accept the battle, the wet battle. Just gotta get a little bit more adapted and know it can go. I guess the confidence kind of started seeping in subtly. It's very bouldery down low, a 14 move V12 sequence. And in this sequence, you can't really stop. It's such a long route and there's so many boulder problems. After you get through that section, you get a no hands knee bar that's pretty painful. And then you execute a six or seven move V9. And then you get a bad rest and then you execute a final V11 to the halfway mark. So it's cool how the style switches up. The climbing style is something similar to the stuff I grew up climbing on and also similar to a lot of the bouldering I do. And also it's really inspiring. And then you have to have endurance to finish it off. When I sent Thor's hammer, I was on the wall for close to 45 minutes. Your, your body starts heating up, your mind starts racing, you kind of forget about some of the movements, but that's also the challenge and what makes it fun. Clipping the anchor is just pretty pretty awesome. I haven't done a 9A plus since 2007, yes. so. <sighs> Woo! That feels good. Yeah, feels higher now. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Bam! Hard earned, dude. Did good. Something happened in my body. 